Today we start a new series called Spring Fever. And it has been a long, dark, dreary, cold, rainy winter. Has it not? I was so glad when the sun came out again, you know, and, and, and everything turned green and it warmed up. Oh my gosh, such a great feeling to be in spring. And what a great metaphor for Christianity, you know, the things that were dormant, the things that are de- that dead, they come back to life in the spring. And so we are doing a series uh, with this, this theme, Spring Fever, and today uh, our message is this. Spring in your step. Now, how many of you could use a spring in your step? I, listen, I could raise both hands. I need a spring in my step. And so, uh, and so I want to I just go through uh, a couple of lists that I made of things that you may have experienced or you may be experiencing right now. So I just want to ask you, are you feeling ashamed or have you ever felt these emotions? Have you been ashamed How about guilty? Have you ever felt guilty? (coughs) Angry? Have you felt angry? How about remorseful? How about condemned? Have you ever felt condemned? Are you feeling condemned now? How about attacked or blamed or criticized? You may have somebody in your life that criticizes you. You may have a coworker or a friend or somebody who is always finding fault with you and you feel criticized. So, how about afraid? How about sad? I thought about this one on the way to church this morning. Discouraged. You feel discouraged? Does anybody feel discouraged? Do you feel distressed? Anxious? You know, this is an epidemic in our culture. Anxiety. You feel anxious. Do you feel inadequate? Worthless? Depressed? And I think this is the worst of all. Hopeless. I I have... There was one time in my life when uh, my, my attitude usually and my emotions are usually pretty steady. You know, it just kind of stays this way. I'm e- even in my emotional health. Uh, but there was a time in my life when I was hopeless, and I'm going to tell you something. It was the, the, the most empty feeling. It was the emptiest feeling, you know, to feel hopeless. Like, oh my gosh, it's just, it's... It's tragic when hopelessness happens to you. So, um, if you have felt any of these things, I can guarantee you this. If you felt any of those emotions, if you felt any of those things, if you struggle with those kinds of things in your own heart, I can guarantee you one thing. Our enemy, Satan, is communicating with you in some way, shape, or form. He might might be using a person to communicate something to you. He might be using a situation. He might be uh, sending thoughts your way. And and you might be thinking these things. You might be taking hold of these things in your own mind. Um, But somehow, some way, in some manner, the enemy... Is speaking to you, and this is what uh, this is what he says to us. He, he he tells us one of two things. He's always telling us one of two things. He's either telling us that we are good. He either tells us that we're good. You know, uh, the young man that came to Jesus, he said to Jesus, "Good master." He was trying to impress Jesus. He was trying to get on his good side. You know, the first thing he says to Jesus. Good master. And Jesus said, why do you call me good? He said, there is none good but God. But our enemy wants us to think, he would love for us to think that we, that we are good. Like you, whatever your name is, your name, put, insert your name, you are good. And he wants, to th- wants you to, he wants you to think that not only are you good, but you are better than other people. He preys on our pride. And when he tells us that we are good, our pride, our pride is inflated when he tells us that we're good. Or he tells us that we're bad. When he tells us that we're bad, our pride is crushed. The same 
The same pride that tells you whenever you look in the mirror, and let's just admit it, sometimes you look in the mirror and you say, dang, you look good. You're having a good day today. Look at you. That is, that is pride that is inflated, okay? But that same pride that when you, when you look in the mirror on a bad hair day, and for some of us it's a no hair day, you know, when you look in the mirror and, it, and you're having a bad day, and you say, oh my gosh, oh, I can't even look. It's the, that same pride, that same pride that elevates whenever things are going well, that same pride is crushed when you look in the mirror and say, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking good today. And, and that applies to every area of our lives, right? I mean, we might be thinking that we're, uh, you know, when we achieve something great, we might think, oh, I'm so good, I'm so good. And uh, then whenever we have a failure or something, oh, I'm so bad, I'm so bad. The truth is that we're neither good or bad. That may come as a surprise to you, but we're not. We're not good and we're not bad. God's message to us is never, you are good. He's never said that. You are good. He's never said that to you. He's never said it to me. He's never said it to anybody. We're not good. We're not bad. You know what we are? We are servants. We're servants. A servant is not good or bad. A servant is either obedient or disobedient. And if you serve a good master, then the things that you do are going to be good. And if you serve a bad master, the things that you do are going to be bad. And the truth is that even Christians, even you and I, uh, sometimes serve the wrong master. And, uh, and so whenever we're serving ourself, whenever we're serving our sin nature, when we're serving um, the enemy uh, in the way we think and the way we talk and the things we do, then bad things are going to come out. And the scripture says this in the New Testament over and over and over in different ways. But when we serve God, it gets good. When we serve a good master, the things that we think, the things that we say, the things that we do, they're good. They're good. So, so we're not good or bad. We are servants. So let me ask you this. How many of you know what John 3.16 says? Just about everybody, right? Probably the most famous scripture in, in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, right? John 3.16. But do you know what 1 John 3.16 says? 1 John 3.16 says this. And uh, listen, just bear with me through a couple of verses here because it's going to get really good at the end. He says, this is John, the apostle, and he says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. That's, what, that's our purpose statement, right? Jesus said the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. We've turned those two greatest commandments into a purpose statement. We worship God and we help people. Everything we do serves to do one or the other of those two things. We are either worshiping God or we are helping people. So, uh, he says, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? He's telling us that we need to, be, we need to serve our good master. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Christianity is, is something that you can learn, that you can, uh, that you can study. It can be, you know, you can get this knowledge in your head, but it doesn't become Christianity until it becomes action, until you act upon it. Uh, you know, after the Gospels, you have the book of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles. And then John, uh, uh, Jesus' brother James, who wrote the book of James, he says, faith without works is dead. Faith without action is dead. 
This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. I want to tell you something. This is something that I have been seeking for at least a year now. The rest and the peace of God. And he says, this is how we do it. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. And here is, this is the it's one of my, I'll just say this. This scripture is what set me free. I'm a type A person. And I and my wife will tell you that whenever I don't do a good job or I fail at something or if I, uh, whenever I sin or if I, I sin against somebody or hurt somebody's feelings or I hurt somebody or I do something that I know was wrong, uh, nobody beats me up like I beat myself up. I go to, I go to work on myself, and I, I beat myself up over and over about that thing. And, and it was really bad when Lene and I were first uh, dating, and we first, uh, you know, the first few years of our marriage. And I'll tell you something, if you're having that kind of struggle, you are not easy to live with. You can ask Lene. Uh, she never uh, thought about divorce, but she did think about uh, maybe an accident that would happen to me. Um, you know, nothing that would be prolonged suffering or anything, but just, you know, something really quick, you know, like that. Uh, it was tough the first few years, but, but this scripture set me free from that. I'm going to tell you something. This scripture set me free, and this is it. This is where I wanted to get today. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and He knows everything. Wow. I'll tell you, in all of my reading, all those years before Lene and I were married, um, I never had read this. I can't believe that I didn't get this. It's just in 1 John 3. How did I skip over this? How did I miss this? All those years I was beating myself to a pulp. I did not think that I deserved God's grace. Really? I, I didn't understand that. Grace is not deserved, right? Grace is a gift. And, and all those years, I beat myself up. Every time I would go astray or do something wrong or you know, think the wrong thing, say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, I'm, I was always beating myself up. And then somebody said, well, you know that even if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. I said, What? And, and, and they, they told me where it was. I went and looked it up, and that's what it says. If your heart condemns you, even if your own heart, not, not somebody else, but even if your own heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart, and He knows everything. He knows everything about you. In fact, He knew everything that you would do before you did it whenever He saved you. And if, if you have not made a decision to serve Christ, He knows everything that you've done and He knows everything that you will do. And yet, He still offers you the invitation to do it right here and right now. That is liberating to me. He knew every thought, every sinful thought of mine. He knew everything that I had ever done. And there were a few things uh, where I had actually hurt people, I tell you, I could not, couldn't let go of it. I, I could not get past it. It just would play over and over in my mind, and, and things would be going uh, fairly well in my life. Things would be going fine. I'd be going along and thinking, you know, good thoughts and doing good things and serving God, and then the thought would hit me, oh, you remember that thing you did that hurt that person? And I would be devastated all over again. But this scripture, this truth, is, it, it is true. What, what the scripture says, the truth will make you free. And this truth freed me. And this is what Jesus said. He said, come to me, all you who are, who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Do any of you feel weary? Do you feel burdened? Anybody? I do. I, that, that's the thing that I struggle with right now in my life, currently. The, the weariness and the burden. And, and so this, this scripture really speaks to me. And what Jesus is saying here is he's saying, take my yoke upon you. Do you know what a yoke is? A lot of us don't know what yokes are. I like, I like the show Little House on the Prairie. I grew up with that song, Little House on the Prairie. And at night, me and uh, my boys, Lene, Lene loves the show too, and we sit down and we will watch, right before bed, we'll watch a, uh, an episode of Little House on the Prairie. And in the first season, uh, Charles, Charles Ingalls, he didn't have horses, he had oxen. And he, those oxen were yoked together. It was a wooden yoke that went across the back and then there were these uh, these U-shaped pieces that went up under the neck, and they were yoked together so that one couldn't pull ahead of the other. They had to pull together, right? And so Jesus is not saying that there is no yoke. He's just saying, he's saying, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble. There's not, there's not a yoke for just one. It's, it's a double yoke. He's saying, come on and get yoked up with me. This is my yoke. Come on and put my yoke on with me. And he pulls alongside us. Everything that we do, we do with him. We're yoked with him. Everything that we think, we're yoked with him in our thinking. We're yoked with him in our words. We're yoked with him. And his yoke is easy. It's so much easier than trying to... To plow, if you saw Charles trying to plow the field with the two oxen, you know that it's so much easier if you have two oxen. So this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying that his, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He's not saying that there is no yoke and he's not saying that there is no burden. He's just saying that it's light. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. When you get... Uh, connected with him and you start living life with him life gets easier it, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be hard things but it's just it just means that it's going to get easier it's your burden is going to get lighter it's going to be so much better than it is without being yoked with him this uh this last week I had a, uh, an experience, and uh, it was a conversation that I had with a person, and they, they accused me of uh, doing something with a wrong motivation. And, and they pointed the finger at me, and it made me so angry, I cannot tell you. I, I was so ticked off. And you know why I was ticked off? Because my motivation, not only was it not wrong, but whenever I did this certain thing that they were pointing their finger at me about, I had their best interests at heart. I was trying to help them, and they were angry with me, telling me that I had done something wrong, that I had done something with the wrong motivation. And so uh, my first thought was, I'm good. I'm good. I'm a good person. I had the right motivation. What are, they, what are they thinking? You know, I was trying to help them, and now they're pointing the finger at me. And so uh, I, I began to think about all the things that I was going to say to them when I saw them next. I was thinking about how I was going to point out how wrong they were and how right I was. And I was even thinking, you know, um, it'll be good for them. It'll be good for them. I, I'll, I'll be helping them to see their shortcomings. And I'll be helping them with their own character. You know, it'll be a good thing for me to point this out to them. And, and to set them straight on my own character. Because I'm good. I'm good. And so uh, 
I wrestled. I did not sleep that night. I wrestled with this thing, and I wrestled with it, and I wrestled with it. And it just was tearing me up on the inside. And then the, the next day, 24 hours later, I'm going through the Chick-fil-A line in Hampton Cove. I'm, I'm sitting there in the line, and I'm telling you, my, you know, my head hurt. My, uh, I had anxiety. I was nervous. I was upset. I was just... And finally, I just said, okay, Lord, okay. I'm going to take your yoke upon me. I'm going to yoke myself with you, and I'm going to think your thoughts, and I'm going to say your words, and I'm going to do what you want me to do. And so here I am, Lord. I give up. I give this thing up to you. And, you know, I, I give up trying to protect my reputation. You know that the Scripture says that Jesus made of himself no reputation but humbled himself as a servant that's what it says about jesus so uh don't try to make a reputation for yourself don't worry about your reputation so much worry about serving christ think about that let that be your focus and so i finally i said lord what is it that you want me to do and this is what i heard from him absolutely nothing that was the last thing that I wanted to hear it was the last thing that I wanted to do I wanted to fix it myself he said nothing and later that day I met with this person and you know what I said I said I'm sorry I'm sorry for what I did I'm sorry uh, for the way I acted whenever we had our uh, argument. I'm sorry for the way I acted. I'm sorry for my pride. And the other person said, I'm sorry too. And it was over. And the relief, the rest, you know, the peace came. And it was over. And it was good. That will put a spring in your step. The freedom the liberty that comes with being yoked with Christ, the, the freedom and the liberty and the, the lightheartedness and all of those things that come as a result, the joy that comes, the happiness that comes. When I was a kid, we used to have this uh, in children's choir, we had this little book called the Sing and Celebrate book. Anybody ever? Nobody? Okay. Um, there was a song in there called Happiness. And the words are, happiness is to know the Savior living a life within his favor. Uh, having a change in my behavior, happiness is the Lord. Happiness. This is what we're in pursuit of, right? Pursuing happiness. The world, all the world pursues happiness. Jesus, that's the way you get it. Now, I want to leave you with this one scripture. It's, it's in one of my favorite passages. It's out of Romans 8. And this is what Paul said. He says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is that good? Yes, that is good.